guys. I'm not sure, but my video just turned off, so I'm going to start this uh, Bible study. It's Graham Cook Game Changers. Um, so if you're interested in more, these are just my notes. So if you're interested in more, I would look up um, Game Changers uh, or just look up Graham Cook and listen to some of his messages. They're really, really good. This Bible study, I'm going to start off in my notes with Genesis 1:27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he man, male and female created he them. Now, in my notes, I wrote, who is God? What is he like? Those are important things for us to know. Um, who is God when things go wrong in our life? That's a powerful question in itself alone. Uh, who is God for me when I am in need? How does God see me? How does he like to be with me and how sorry guys I've got notes here and they're not cooperating who is God for me when I am in need and how does God see me how does he talk to me and those questions really get you thinking don't they that's why we've got to know God in his word. We've got to know um, how Satan works. And guys, we can't just believe there's a God and not believe that there's a Satan. Okay? So, um, just keep that in mind. We've got to know how both of them work. Um, Matthew 16 and verses 13 through 18 is really what this game changer chapter is about. When Jesus came into the coast of Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they said, some of them, some men think you are John the Baptist, which John the Baptist at this moment was dead. So he wasn't, and some Elias and others, uh, Jeremiah, and one of the prof or one of the prophets, he said unto them, but whom do you say I am? He's asking him, who do you say I am? Who do you believe me to be? Who do you know me to be? Because you can't just think about who he is. You have to know who he is. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That means God to our hearts, uh, revealed to our minds, that we know, that we know, that we know that, uh, that he is the Christ. Uh, our Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, thou, thou art Peter. He changed his name. Did you hear that? How he changed his name from Simon to Peter? And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Who is my church? It's those that have surrendered their lives to Christ and decided that Christ knows best and God knows us better than we know ourselves and that we need God to lead us and guide us. All right. And I, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And here is what all of that is going to come together in my notes. Your identity, just like um, Simon was now, is now Peter, your identity, my identity has two parts. How we know we are known in heaven 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, how he knows us in heaven, and who we have become on earth through our earthly experiences. Um, who we have become on earth through our earthly experiences are our physical, intellectual, and emotional, our behavior, our personality, and our character. Okay? This, and we must make war against negativity. And you'll see where all of this meshes and all of this comes together in just a moment in my notes. It does not matter how other people perceive you. It does not matter how you through... It does, however... Okay, let me start that over because I messed it up. It does not matter how other people perceive you. And I say perceive you because you know there's a lot of people that see you, but they don't see your heart and they don't see who you are in Christ. You know, Christians are not perfect, right? We make mistakes just like everybody else. But people do not see. It does not matter how they perceive you. It does matter how you through Christ, see yourself, right? How did Simon, how did God see Simon? He saw him as Peter. And let me go back to that because, you know, I actually kind of missed that the first time around when I, first, when I read this the first time. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal to you who I am. But my Father, which is in heaven, and I also, and I say also unto thee that thou art now Peter upon this rock. Peter was a rock. And that he was going to spread the gospel and I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, so, God invests three things in our identity. Legal authority over the enemy, Satan. Remember, I said you can't believe in God without Satan, okay? Permission to overcome every obstacle, elevated above our difficulties and circumstances. So let's go back up here after he renamed Peter. And he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, and again, I said it's not like magic. It's not some magic wand that we wave over obstacles, okay? It's what we believe about God's word and what he says about us and what he promised us and how we use it. Every difficulty we would face, he knew about before we faced it, before it happened. He is way ahead of us. If he knew this was coming and he allowed it without stopping it, then he must have a purpose in it. Now, I'm not going to read these stories to you, but you can read the story of Joseph and how he was sold by his own brothers into slavery. But God had spoken to him in dreams about who he was was and who he was going to be. What, what does God say you are in Christ that will give you peace in your circumstances? Who are you in heaven is who you are, are on earth. Who was Saul on the road to Damascus? Saul was given a new name, Paul. Who did God say David, the shepherd boy, was? That made him believe and be confident enough to kill Goliath. 
it wasn't just because God helped him kill a bear and a um, lion to protect the sheep. It was that as well. But there was more to it. God told him he was going to be a king. Do you believe the giants in your life? Or can you trust your creator God and what he said you are? God knew the giants you would face. He allowed them to happen because he knew his purpose in you. Do you? When you know how God how God says you, uh, when you know what God says you are, you will know how to stand against the giants in your life. Now, just like every single one of us, if we've had a job or if we've had a family member, there's all, or if you've gone to school, we've all had that one bully in our life. Some of us have had many bullies in our life, okay? Well, Satan is like that one bully at work, that bully we have all had that is so threatened that to, threatened that to feel big, they have to make you feel smaller. They point out all your mistakes, all your imperfections, so you second guess who you are at work. They want you to get discouraged and to feel defeated. Well, guess what? Satan is just like that bully. He wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to feel defeated and blame God and maybe even just turn your back on God altogether. That's his main goal right there, to rob, steal, and destroy. You remember John 10.10? 10? He wants you to feel like God has abandoned you. What is Joseph? What if Joseph had let slavery defeat him? What if David was too scared of the giant? What if Saul kept remembering his ugly past? And that's another one you should read. Satan is scared of what you will be. He wants to hold you back. Just like the bullies at work want to hold you back so that they look good. That's the way Satan is. Satan's this big, but sometimes we make him this big. Your giant, the giant in your life, that circumstance in your life, that hard thing in your life. It's just a doorway to your future. The giant is not an obstacle. That circumstance is not an obstacle. It's a doorway. God's plans are bigger than your plans. And we're going to end with this. His ways are bigger than your ways. Guys, I hope this was just as much a blessing to you as it was to me. And an eye opener and I hope that you will pray and ask God to show you what he sees in you and who your identity is in him. And I will see you on the next podcast. Thank you for listening.